Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new 2022 Riverstone Legacy 42FS KG Toy Hauler 5th Wall. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and outside of the RV. Then we're going to close it all up and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside the new 2022 Riverstone Legacy 42 FSKG here. We're going to start here in the kitchen area. Again, as you've seen on the floor plan, this is a front kitchen model here. So up front here, we have our little kitchen sink slide out area here. And you can see there's some storage down below. Got a little flip down sponge holder kind of door there with some area there. You have the drawer on the right, full extending ball bearing drawer, got a drawers. Then you have the dishwasher, pull out the dishwasher down below. Pretty good amount of space in the dishwasher there to do some dishes. On the left side over here, there's a little slot where you can put your sink cover slash cutting boards. And there is a undermount double bowl stainless sink here, high rise sprayer faucet. Big window overlooking the back side of the RV. It is an emergency exit window, but it also opens as well. On the left side over here, you have some drawers down below. Again, full extending ball bearing drawer got a drawers. You have some cabinet space up above. And then you can also see there on the left, you have your solar charge controller, electric outlet, and the turbo exhaust fan control. Currently using the Samsung refrigerator, has the freezer on bottom with an ice maker, and then quite a bit of storage space up top as well. Over on the right side, down below, you have a couple full extending ball burn drawer gutted drawers, some cabinet space up above, and another electric outlet there on the right. There's a decent amount of room to actually kind of maneuver around your kitchen area here as well. Now in the island section here, you have the large Insignia oven. It's currently one of the biggest ovens offered in an RV right now. Uh, so you have the glass front. You do have some storage on the left and storage on the right of the oven. Uh, so basically three drawers and then some storage area there. Four burner stove top. There's a decent amount of counter space around the stove top and there's an electric outlet on each side of the island so you could set something there and plug it in as well. Panning up here a little bit, you do have the turbo exhaust fan up there. Large, large exhaust fan here for an RV. These things move a ton of air. So if you're in here cooking, basically all your smoke and stuff is going to go straight out the top. Over on this slide here, you have six full extending ball bearing drawer gutter drawers on the left. You have your pull out trash can area. And then you also have some cabinet space on the right down there. Another window here next to the microwave area, and again, that window does open. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, these are dual pane windows. So you have two layers of glass, and the windows do crank open. There is the Samsung microwave that you're seeing here, larger microwave. They do have an option for a convection microwave if it's available at the time of your build. Uh, you can get that. However, with all the shortages and supply chain issues going on right now, the convection microwaves have been really hard for them to get. Um, so you may or may not get that if you order it. Uh, but just kind of keep that in mind. That is an available option. Hopefully, if you want it, you can get it at the time. The floor for the most part stayed very, very similar in the Legacy. They did have to switch uh, floor suppliers. 
Um, so it is just a sh little bit different, but almost looks identical. Um, so there's a little bit there. This one has two chairs, does have some storage in the chairs. And you can stare straight at your TV area, kind of overlooking the area. Some people like to use this as a little bit of a desk or even an eating area, depending on what you want to use it for. Uh, over on the right, there is electric outlet and USB charger port there. Another big window overlooking the back side of the RV. Nice size ceiling fan here. This is a 110 volt ceiling fan with a light. Some brands use a 12 volt version, but this is a 110 version. Stepping down into your living room area here, there is a grab handle that you can hold on to if you need to. So furniture color and material changed up a little bit and they also have another color you'll see pop up here in the picture as well. Now this sofa over here changed up how it actually comes out for this furniture that they went to basically. Um, so it does actually still fold out, makes into a big bed, but it is a lot easier in my opinion to pull out and put up compared to the old version where you had to kind of lift up and lock it back in place. Uh, so this is just a little bit different, but it is still really nice furniture. Up above you have some overhead cabinet space there and the cabinet doors have soft close hinges on them and the cabinet drawers have soft close ball bearing drawer guided drawer guides. theater seat here it is a power theater seat and that power theater seat is also wired into the inverter on the RV so even if you go boondock camping you can still kick back and recline using the inverter power the uh, seat also has cup holders built in which have little lights in them and also USB charger port built into the cup holder too There's an electric outlet on the left side there and some light controls as well. This one has the desk feature. You can also order it with an extra sofa there if you do not want the desk. So it's kind of your choice how you order it. Talk with your sales guy about that feature. Most dealers seem to stock it with the desk. Uh, a lot of full-timers really like having a place to, uh, you know, kind of do your business or at the same time, you know, maybe the wife does sewing and seamstery or, you know, hobby type of stuff as well. Um, so that becomes a nice little area right there to have. You have six full extending ball bearing drawer guided drawers that come out, again, soft close. There's an electric outlet underneath of there as well. And again, comes with one chair here, again, with some storage built in overhead cabinet space up above there as well. I got some stuff out here on the desk for you to kind of see. Uh, the unit now comes with a water filtration system. So this is a little water filter that'll go in the canister when we get outside. A little water filter wrench. The unit also has the tire pressure monitoring system standard. So this little screen can go into your truck or whatever and you could basically see what's going on with your tires. This customer ordered it with the four camera system. So there's a seven inch monitor that again, you can put in your truck and see what's going on. It has a camera down each side, one over the entry door and one over the back. You'll see those when we get outside. The unit also comes with a small little DVD player that if you wanted to use, you could stash it back in behind the TV. Uh, I'll show you that here in a second. And then it's got a little bag, Riverstone bag, that has some of your paperwork and stuff in it. Now, one thing I sometimes forget to mention on these Riverstones is this stuff right here, guys. This is all real stained hardwood. A lot of brands, this is a veneer paper wrap wood. So you are getting actual real stained hardwood. Same thing over here on 
you know, your little hard valances and things like that throughout the RV. So I definitely like the fact that, again, you're, pay you're paying a lot of money for these things and you're actually getting a higher quality woodworking and stuff. A lot of brands, even when you get into the higher quality RVs, still use the cheaper veneer wrap type of wood. You have a large fireplace here, widescreen fireplace, that basically is a fancy electric space heater, but these things are really nice. They knock the chill off in these uh, river stones really well. Just above, you have the JBL uh, audio stereo system with indoor speakers. And back in behind the TV, there is also a subwoofer. You can kind of see it popping up there. That TV is on a swing arm, so you can move that TV around and kind of, again, slide that DVD player back in behind there, hook it up. Uh, if you order it with like a satellite system, they offer a King Dish satellite. You know, one of the boxes can go back in behind there, or if you put in your own dish afterwards, you can kind of put that box in behind there as well, mount it to the wall back there. Um, just above the radio is a little bit of a storage area, but on the top section in that storage is a couple electric outlets, a U, uh, HDMI uh, output there, and then you also have your TV antenna controls there with your booster. So you do have some little hidden stuff up underneath of there. And then down to the right of the fireplace is the propane leak detector. Now going up the steps into the hallway area of the bathroom, there is a pull-out drawer. And you can also see there is a couple night lights there as well. A grab handle to take you up that hallway area also. Um, back over here, I did forget to mention, there is a, another step right here going up and down that does have a drawer built in. And you have the electric box with some breakers and fuses there. Again, another nightlight area there. And then popping up here in the picture, you can kind of see, we'll get into more detail when we come back in, but there's a little coat hook holder area right there. Your firefly system, ceiling fan light switch, and the uh, inverter button there as well. So we'll get more into that when we come back in. Um, one other thing that I do sometimes forget to mention on this firefly system, they have these little soft touch uh, light switches and you can actually hold these buttons in and dim the lights in the RV or brighten the lights in the RV so it's kind of neat that works on some of the lights throughout the RV but not all the lights throughout the RV for example this hallway light is dimmable but the step light is not dimmable On up here into the bathroom area, you have a decent sized bathroom for a toy hauler here. Um, this right here, you have the larger porcelain foot flush toilet, which does have the nicer lid as well. It's not a typical plastic lid on it. Uh, there's a little toilet paper holder on the wall there. You have a nice little medicine cabinet. Again, real wood medicine cabinet there. Uh, up top, there's another turbo exhaust fan up here large skylight over top of the shower area you have ac and heat both in here adjustable shower bar flip down seat sliding glass doors there to keep the water in over here you have a decent amount of counter space uh, you know to kind of put your toothbrush and little odds and end things there there's three drawers and some storage space down below that countertop also is a nicer solid surface countertop where a lot of times uh, fifth bowl brands or trailer brands in general go more toward a less expensive countertop when you get to the bathroom area. The controls on the wall here for your Truma on demand water heater. Really large backlit mirror as well. And then stepping on in here a little bit, you can see there is a fan control and light switch on the wall, a little towel holder and stuff as well. Going on back into the bedroom area here. You do have a slide out in here, and that slide out over there on the right 
is a closet slash dresser slide out. Down below are four drawers built in, and then you have hanging closet across there. Uh, so it has multiple curtain rods, it has, uh, or closet rods, and it has the Dyson vacuum in there as well. And there's two motion lights that you can either put in motion mode or you can leave them on or turn them off. Plenty of room to walk around the bed area here. There on the right, you do have pretty deep cabinet storage there. Up top, you have some overhead cabinets. And then on the left, you again have more cabinet space. Now back in behind the pillows there is a lot of counter space there. So if you wanted to set like your alarm clocks and something to drink or whatever, you know, your reading glasses, things like that, there's quite a bit of counter space back there to set stuff. There's an electric outlet and USB charger on both sides of the bed or even a, a CPAP machine or something like that. You got plenty of room to set that back there. Now this bed raises up and down with the garage area. You'll see that when we get outside, uh, but there's a button outside to raise this bed up or take it back down. Kind of spinning around here. You can see there on the left side is a stackable washer dryer. Now that is standard on the Riverstone as well. TV up top, 40 inch TV, and that has an FM radio built into it also. So you have your radio downstairs to control your inside speakers in the living room area. And you have the TV up here to give you another radio if you want. They do have an option for an outside TV with outside speakers that work off of the TV. Uh, some people order it, some people don't. We'll see what this guy did when we get outside. Down below you have uh, four drawers and some storage space as well. There's also a little bit of lighting down there as well. And kind of flipping over here, looking this direction, you have obviously your swing door there, big window overlooking the campsite area. There's an electric outlet down there also. Now, one thing that I did forget to mention when we were down here talking earlier is going to be these window seals and stuff throughout the RV that you're noticing. The Riverstone has a three inch thick sidewall where a lot of brands are two inches or less. And because of that, they're able to build in window seals, a little bit nicer looking. Um, and also you will find the day and night roller shades throughout the RV. Um, even in the bedroom area, they're still using the day and night part. A lot of brands just go to a night part when you get to the bedroom area. All right, guys, we're going to head outside. I want to show you around the outside of the RV, and then we're going to come back in and close it up. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, guys, we are now back on the outside of the brand new 2022 Riverstone Legacy 42 FSKG model here. Again, this is a toy hauler version, front kitchen fifth wheel here. Starting off, this has the optional blue thunder paint job so they offer four paint exteriors plus if you do the regular riverstone you could get the regular fiberglass but on the legacy you have four paint options when you upgrade to this package the four colors stayed the same as the late 2021 versions however the stripe slash pattern changed up a little bit from last year's version the unit has Frameless, dual pane, deep tent safety glass windows on your side walls here. You have the optional slide out awning toppers that you're seeing in this video here. Uh, some customers like them, some don't. This customer chose to go with them. Most dealers stock it with them. Their slide out awning toppers have the metal wrap feature on it as well. So when it is closed up, 
It has like a little metal encasing to kind of help protect it when you're traveling down the road or storing it. Now, on the Riverstone version, when they do these slide toppers, they'll do them where it's nice and easy and accessible, but if it's under that main awning, they will not do it. That slide is very tall compared to a lot of other fifth wall brands. And the way that awning comes down when it's fully extended out and the wind bouncing it up and down and stuff, that material could hit that awning topper if it was to be on there and it could rip it. So the factory will not do one there. If you want to do one aftermarket yourself, more power to you. But the factory won't because they're not going to warranty the thing if it gets damaged by being there. So not going to warranty the awning material, I guess you should say. Um, behind this first door here is your two 40-pound propane tanks. Down below that is also a gas line hookup if you wanted to plug in like a portable grill or something. Now, when we were inside, we were talking about the four camera system this customer ordered. And one of those is on this running light right here. So on the front two running lights on each side, uh, you will have a camera shooting down each side of the RV. Up above the entry door right there is one of your four cameras. And then on the rear of the RV is another camera, your observation camera as well. So you can flip through on that seven inch monitor that you've seen when we were in there. You could flip through the cameras and kind of see what's going on when you're backing into your campsite or whatever, just driving down the road. You want to see down one side or the other or the back, you can do so. Now back in behind this door is your very tall storage compartment here. Now you can see up in there, there is a couple motion lights in this section, uh, but you're seeing that black tube steel framing. The Riverstone has a much heavier duty upper chassis area here. A lot of brands are either wood framed up there or aluminum tube framed. Here you have a heavy duty steel chassis up in this section. Electric outlet there, a sliding panel that can uh, get you into the back for some access. And also too, when we were in there talking a little bit, that three and a quarter inch thick sidewall set up here, you can see that much easier when you're outside and kind of pop open a door. Again, most brands are only two inches or less. Your ultralight versions sometimes are about an inch, inch and a quarter thick sidewall. So you're getting a much thicker, better insulated sidewall than what you will find in most RVs. This is an R16 sidewall. Most two inch walls are rated for anywhere from an R9 to an R11, depending on what type of bead foam they use in their wall. Because again, most of them are glued together where this is a hung wall on this RV. You should really watch the Riverstone construction video. I know it's a little old and outdated. I think I have one on my YouTube channel that I made. Uh, you can search for that one as well. But uh, there is a really nice construction video that kind of goes over the main body of how they kind of build it and put it together. There's an electric outlet here. This unit has the more ride step above step with the shock assist. So you got the quad entrance step here. Again, you can kind of see it holding itself up there in the picture. Uh, if I still have the video, I'll thread it into the end of this of how the step kind of just flips up and down and everything. Um, but there's also adjustable feet. This is rated for 500 pounds, where the traditional hover steps only rated for 300 pounds. There is a little step light down underneath of there. I don't know if uh, yet you kind of see it down there. And that porch light up there is in amber mode, but you can also put it in white mode as well. Um, so that is usable two different ways, depending on how you want to use it. The entry door handle here does have the push button lock code on it. Large folding entry handle there to get you in and out of the RV. And next to that entry handle is gonna be your model number. Again, 42 FSKG here. 
You'll see a little advertisement sticker that they always slap on here talking about the extra two layers of clear coat, uh, you know, really smooth finished paint lines and everything like that. Again, some brands paint the RV, but don't necessarily do multiple layers of clear on it. They'll just clear it maybe one time. Uh, here you have multiple layers of clear coat to really give it that shine and smooth finish. This unit is a triple axle unit. You have Goodyear tires standard when you do that legacy package. You can also upgrade the axle suspension system to the more ride version if you want. This customer chose to go with the standard version, which does give you the road armor suspension in between. And you also have disc brakes standard on the legacy version as well. See that big orange light there? That's not just a running light, that is also a turn signal, midship turn signal. Really nice to have so the people can see when you're trying to get over. Most brands do not have a midship turn signal. Kind of looking back down the side a little bit here, it's a little tough in the garage, unfortunately. Um, this is, again, dual power awnings, LED light strips, adjustable arms for tilting and water runoff, manual overrides in case of an electronic failure. Now back here is one of your big storage compartment areas. This is huge. Goes all the way across. Now back in beside here is also an electric outlet back there. So you could plug something in here if you needed to. You'll see the doors flip down. So when these do flip up, you have the slam lock baggage doors and you also have thicker baggage doors for better insulation purposes. 6-point automatic hydraulic leveling jack system on the RV standard. Uh, so you have two behind the axles, two in front of the axles, and then your two up front. This little bit of storage area or TV area, whatever you want to use it for, even if you don't order it with the TV, which this customer did not, you still get the electric outlet and the cable outlets and stuff in there. So you could buy your own TV and put it in there if you want to. When you order it with the TV from the factory, it'll obviously be in there. And it also comes with two outdoor speakers and their TV has a radio built in, FM radio, um, that you can play through those speakers and stuff. But if you don't want those speakers and TV, you don't have to get it. Here we have another little storage compartment area and it does have a motion light in there also. Electric outlet there as well. We'll pop up a picture here. You can kind of see what that rear end looks like with the door closed. Nicely finished off paint job on the back. Now this unit has reverse lights. A lot of fifth wheels do not have reverse lights. A lot of trailers don't have reverse lights, uh, but you do have reverse lights. Again, that is really nice to have those when you're trying to back into your campsite at nighttime. Um, also, you have the docking lights up top there. And then again, you can see that observation camera if you do that for camera system. Ramp door here is the more ride zero G door here. This door is super easy. We'll get into more of that at the end of the video as well. Um, we'll come back to that, but really, really nice door here. And the door is rated for 1500 pounds when it would be in say a patio mode. Now they don't offer patio mode from the factory, but I have had a couple customers that have done their own version of that. It's only rated for 1500 pounds when in patio mode and then 3,000 pounds when it's in ramp mode, 1,000 pounds per wheel. And we will also have a little section here where we'll talk about this garage area. We'll see that at the end as well. Um, but you got four motion lights in there, electric outlet in there, the up and down button here on the left to raise it up and down, and then four tie downs in there, rubber diamond plate floor. Again, we'll get kind of back into that as well toward the end. 
Ladder comes down nice and low so you can easily climb up onto the roof, check things out. Ladder is rated for 250 pounds. You can see in the picture popping up up top here, there's three ACs on this unit, two standard, third's an option. Uh, there's also a uh, solar panel up there, one standard. You can opt in for two more if you want uh, or do your own aftermarket, depending on what you really want to get into. Um, then you got other things up there, plumbing, stack vents, skylights, all that stuff, guys. Get up there, make sure you check it out and maintain it. Very important to keep that water out. Um, one other thing to mention on the roof section up here, again, you've seen all the paint job and everything like that, but also up here, they paint down that first few inches of roof line. Really nice so that that material matches the base color of the paint. Some brands do not paint their roof line and it's just a white rubber or white vinyl, depending on what they're using up there. Uh, material and it just kind of looks a little funky. So it's kind of nice to see that Riverstone does paint their roof line up there as well. Below the baggage door that's hanging down here is your powered power cord reel. Up top here again you have some more storage kind of going on across there. You have those two motion lights inside that area as well. Now in between these two baggage doors is another little flip up area and that is where the dump hose is stored. It does come with a dump hose as part of the legacy package, but again, if you do the regular Riverstone, it will not have that feature. The other side of the large pass-through storage compartment. Kind of looking up here a little bit, that little black square is going to be your dryer vent. There is also a, another light over here. The Truma on demand water heater located right there. And then here is your little docking station area here. So you can kind of feed your water hose and stuff through the hole here. This will flip open. Um, but here you have that water filter system built in. You've got your outside utility shower here, cable satellite inlets, city water, fresh water fills, all that type of stuff. Black tank uh, flush and all that here. Black and gray tank handles. And then there's a little drain here. You have a light here, again, motion light. So you can turn it on, off, or motion mode. Now going over to this side of the RV here, you can see kind of popping up down below there is your dump area. So it's just underneath of this middle slide. Now just over to the left underneath is your galley dump handle and also your fresh water tank drain. furnace exhaust out here. Now over here, kind of checking out this side, little white thing there is the ice maker on off valve. Just below that ice maker on off valve is a low point water drain. Up above is your Go Power 1500 watt inverter, which runs a couple electric outlets inside along with the refrigerator. Little red handle back there is your battery disconnect switch. Down below right here is a little trap door you can pop open and that is where the hydraulic motor is for the jacks and couple slides. Over here you have your auto level jack system, one of the cap light switches. And then back in the middle back here is the water manifold system. Very nice to have this right here. That basically allows you to turn on and off individual water lines in case one gets damaged somehow. Uh, very nice to be able to still use the rest of the coach even though one line may have some malfunction to it. 
Behind this door right here is going to be your battery compartment. There's room for up to four batteries in here and they are on slide trays. Again, thicker baggage door here. Next up are gonna be these stickers. I wanna pop up some of these stickers for you guys to get you some info on here. The first sticker popping up is going to be your gross vehicle weight sticker, your main data sticker. So this sticker has the production date, VIN number, axle sizes. Um, most importantly though, is that gross vehicle weight, 21,000 pound gross vehicle weight on this RV. Now the next sticker popping up is gonna be your unloaded vehicle weight sticker. This is basically what the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. And then it also has the vehicle length on it as well. Next is gonna be your cargo carrying capacity stickers, which has basically the information about how much gear you can load into the RV before you exceed that gross vehicle weight. And last but not least are your tire stickers. And these are basically telling you the tire size, but most importantly telling you the proper tire pressure. Do not let the tire pressure drop too low, guys, because then the, basically the tire can't hold the weight of the RV properly. So very important to keep an eye on that tire pressure when you're traveling. Up front here, you can see, a little tough to see in the dark, but you kind of see here, you have a couple LED light strips, really nice finished off design here. Again, part of that full body paint package. LED light strip directly above the trail air ride feature here. This is an optional feature. You do not have to get it if you'd rather do a aftermarket more ride or a Reese goose box or something like that. But the factory does offer this trail air ride suspension box here when you order it from them. Typical seven way Bargman plug, breakaway cable, all that kind of stuff. Now down below, you have generator prep boxing here. Um, LP generator prep is what it's set up for, an Onan 5500 watt version. Uh, factory does offer a generator, assuming it's available when your unit's being built. Very tough to get generators right now due to all the supply chain crap going on. So unfortunately, you may or may not get that if you want it. So it might have to be done aftermarket, but you can get all the prepping done ahead of time. On the right side there is the hydraulic disc brake reservoir. So you gotta check the fluid in that from time to time. You can also see popping up in the next picture here, uh, there is a light up there and part of the auto level control balancer up there. And then you can kind of see some of that uh, wiring for the generator prep up there. All right, guys, we are going to head back inside. I wanna show you what this thing looks like closed. So we'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we are now back inside the new 2022 Riverstone Legacy 42 FSKG here. Um, we're gonna close this thing up and I wanna show you what it looks like closed. Kind of go over a couple things with you here. Uh, so when you're ready to open or close the RV and kind of do some of the other controls, you do have to come in here to your Firefly system. And right now I'm on the home page, probably kind of hard to see, unfortunately, in the camera. Um, but what we've got kind of going on here, let's see if we can maybe zoom this in a little better to the better lens. There we go. I think we can see that a little bit better for you. Um, so first things up, we have our tank readers here, basically kind of telling us fresh water, gray water one, two, and then black water. And I accidentally hit the uh, tank heater button there as well. We have our water pump on off switch. We have our meter right here telling us what is going on with our battery. We have one of the three ACs. This unit was ordered with three ACs. And these again are the Whisper Quiet ACs. But I have one of them right here on the home screen. And I can run the temperature up and down real quickly here or go into the HVAC system. 
I have a master light switch button here to turn off almost every light in the RV. Or I can turn them all on with that on off switch as well. You can go in here, kind of see what's going on with your electric system a little bit, kind of see what's up there. You can go back down here to the light controls. We have our front section, rear section, and then our exterior section. Again, you can turn on and off these buttons right here, or some of them have the soft touch uh, light switches throughout the RV. The ones with the up and down arrows on them, again, are the ones you can dim. The ones without them are not dimmable. Here we're going to our HVAC system, and right here we have all three ACs showing up. Again, this was ordered with three ACs. This also was ordered with two heat pumps on it. Some customers do one, some do two, some do all three, depending on how you want to order it. But this customer did two. And then you also have your gas furnace as well. So you can come in here, control all of these from this one point. We go into our slide control slash awning control area. And it's all kind of color coded. Um, a little bit hard to see again in the camera, but um, you got each slide individually and then your two awnings individually to run those in and out. Now the bedroom slide is an electric slide. So I'm going to go set the uh, camera down back there and we'll be right back. Okay, so we got the camera placed here so you can kind of see what this looks like. And basically we are going to retract the slide out. So it's going to come in and get basically right up close to the bedside there. So pretty simple, easy to do. And then we're going to run it right back out. All you got to do is hit the extend button and that's going to take it right back out. This is the uh, Lippert in-wall slide, used to be referred to as the Schwentech slide. This is basically a 12 volt motor system that runs this in and out. So even if you're not plugged into electric, it's still easy to do. All right, guys, we are now up in the kitchen area here. And I just want to kind of show you what this looks like closed and with these slides kind of going in and out here. So we're going to hit the retract button on our Firefly system. And you have, again, a slide control for each one of these slides. This is the Lippert in-wall slide up here as well. So these are 12 volt electric slides. When these slides come in, they're basically coming in super close to the island. So you're not gonna be able to walk past the island to get to your refrigerator. So if you are stopping at a grocery store or something like that, and you want to get in here and load your groceries, you're going to have to bump one of the slides out a little bit. So we'll pick the camera up here just so you kind of see. This is really, really tight fit. And then when you are ready to go out, you just hit the button to extend them back out. Now, one thing that is pretty important when you are opening and closing these slide outs is make sure that those cabinet doors back there didn't accidentally pop open. Those cabinet doors have a pretty good strong magnetic holder on them, but there's still always a slight chance that something could malfunction or you get on a really extremely rough road and they could possibly pop open. So make sure you do check that before you get running that room all the way out so you don't accidentally damage the slide fascia or the cabinet door or something. Now, spinning back around here, we are going to check out these downstairs slides here. And these two downstairs slides are hydraulic slides. Um, so these are going to function a little bit differently. And these slides have um, flush floor slides basically so they will kind of tilt upward a little bit when they come in and let's see which one we got here we got the couch over there very very important to make sure that tv's latched back all the way 
Make sure your theater seat is scooted back into place properly because that theater seat's freestanding and you can kind of move it around to give yourself a little more headroom when it's reclined. And let's see, we got the other one here to close up the, uh, the uh, desk area here. And again, that slide kind of comes up over the subfloor. Very, very important guys on these downstairs slides, these flush floor type of slides, to make sure your floor is clean so that you don't accidentally rip it. So rocks, you know, pebbles, grandkids toys, kids toys, whatever, you know, whatever. Just make sure dog toys, all that stuff is up, out of the way so that you are not gonna run it over and damage your floor. Now again, the nice thing on that legacy floor, those are individual tiles, so you could possibly replace an individual piece, but it's not worth the headache. Just make sure the floor is clean before you accidentally run it over something. And back to the extend button here. Taking this back out, you can see it goes out in and out pretty quickly on the hydraulic slides. They are faster than the electric ones. Now, when these slides are closed, you can obviously see you're not getting back to the bedroom. So you are gonna have to bump this one out to get in and out of your bedroom area if you need to. But real quick, simple, all the slides have their own individual buttons so you could kind of control everything. All right, so we got her loaded up in there. As you can see, again, just a little two-seater golf cart. So there's still plenty of room at the end here. Plenty of room on both sides of the area. And obviously, I got it a little more over to the right side there, so it gave me a little more room to squeeze myself out of there. Again, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with more of my videos. I'm trying to update a lot of the information for you. Gonna squeeze back up in here. You can kind of see here, still room around. We're not touching the wall or anything in there. Give an electric outlet in here, a couple other uh, lights back up in there. Those are motion lights also. But pretty easy setup, not real hard to put up and down in there. Again, guys, check out couchesrvnation.com. They let me do these little videos for you guys. One of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country will definitely save you a lot of money on a new RV. Hey guys, and welcome to this portion of the RV video. I wanted to take a couple minutes and show you the back garage section, how this kind of functions a little bit. Um, I wanna show you the More Ride Zero G ramp door here. This is an upgraded door system. You'll notice there's no big spring across the bottom of here. So this system actually works a lot smoother. It also is a little bit lighter weight feeling when you actually go to raise and lower the door. So a little bit nicer overall system, but a key lock right here, hit the key, it unlocks. As you can see, it's not falling down onto me. It actually is holding its own weight. A lot of those spring assist doors can't do this. Um, it's real, not super heavy, but it's heavy enough that you know that you're trying to pick it up kind of thing. Uh, so this right here comes right on down. Check out the beautiful paint job too, guys. A Riverstone Legacy Blue Thunder paint. But it comes right on down. Again, real simple to do. If you need to raise it back up, it comes up and down really, really easy. You'll also notice there's no big bars or anything that you have to padlock. Again, it has its own built-in lock there. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit so I can uh, show you back up inside of here a little bit better. 
Now inside here, there are four lights that you see. Those are motion or on off lights. Either way, you got uh, the ability to use them there. Now I wanted to show you kind of the function of the bed. This bed is on the uh, in wall slide um, that they actually use in, uh, for, by Lippert. It's one of Lippert's slide out control walls basically. Um, but it's got a button right here. You push this button to bring this thing down. Now I'll put the measurements for the garage and stuff in the actual description down below, but roughly it's about 65 inches wide and it's about 83 inches tall when it's up. And then you do have different stages, which I'll kind of list those stages out and stuff for you too. Um, but again, really nice system. You have four tie downs in there, the rubber diamond plate floor. There's an electric outlet in there. So if you have a golf cart, like the one you've seen, uh, we put up here a little bit ago, um, you can actually plug in the golf cart electric charger and plug it in and have it kind of sit down here. There's two vents built in for fuming and stuff like that to kind of escape. But overall, a pretty cool little garage setup. And again, guys, even if you're not taking a motorcycle with you, a Can-Am or you know, a golf cart, and you're just full time and around the country, that is a whole lot of storage space in there. You know, you can take things with you, a big full size gas grill, uh, you know, pack all your winter clothes or summer clothes in here out of the way. You know, some of those little knick-knacky things that you, you know, just couldn't give up when you sold your house and, you know, bought an RV to go full time. That type of stuff can go in here. 2,000 pound capacity on that back garage section there. Again, that does take away from your overall capacity of towing, um, but you can do a lot of stuff back here with this functionality. Thanks. Hey everyone, and welcome to this portion of the video. I wanted to take a minute and show you this more ride step that they're using on the Riverstone and also a few of the other products that Forest River makes as well. Um, this is the more ride step above entry step, and this has the shock assist on it. So when you go to put this up and down, it's real simple and lightweight, easy to do actually. You can kind of see here, this thing will literally hold itself up. Again, that's due to the shock assist feature that is on this particular version of the step. Now, this step has adjustable feet here. So on this one, we're actually looking at here, it has just basically a quick pull pin. You pull the pin, slide the foot in and out and put it back in. Now they are talking about going to another version, same thing, but just a little pin difference. It'll have a push button instead of a pin. We'll see if that ends up happening or not, but right now they're doing the pin version. Now the step just basically flips right back up inside the doorway here. And then you can close your door safely. Now the nice thing on this step is this step is capable of holding more weight than a traditional hover step. So when you pull this thing down here, this thing is rated for 500 pounds, where a traditional hover step is only rated for 300 pounds, so a big difference. Um, when you go in and out of this thing, it is a lot more stable. It's not shaking the whole camper. You know, I'm over 200 pounds and me walking in and out of this thing doesn't jar the camper as bad as it would in a traditional hover step where it's trying to put all that flex and force on it. So nice step here, just flip it up and down, nice and easy guys, and out of your way. Hope that helps kind of go over the step for you.